People like to categorize things. It helps us wrap our minds around this complex world that we live in. When it comes to plants, range managers like to categorize them by life form. Almost anyone can recognize a grass with its linear leaves and fibrous roots. This one is a needle grass. We call wildflowers, like this geranium, forbs. Forbs are basically all the non-woody plants out here that aren't grasses. They tend to have broad leaves and a taproot. Now we come to the woody plants, the shrubs and the trees. What's the difference between a shrub and a tree? Height, primarily. But shrubs like this sagebrush also tend to have lots of branches starting really low on the plant without any one main stem or trunk. This aspen tree has a main trunk. It's also much taller and has much deeper roots than the sagebrush we just looked at. Knowing what life forms of plants are in an area gives range managers clues about how deep the soil is, how much moisture the area gets, and what kind of animals might be around. It helps us make sense of the wonderful complexity of the Wyoming landscape. From the University of Wyoming Cooperative Extension Service, I'm Zola Ryan. As with all land plants, the life cycle of an angiosperm alternates between a diploid sporophyte generation, represented here by the flower of the mature sporophyte plant, and a haploid gametophyte generation. Within the flower's male parts, called the anthers, are millions of diploid spores called microsporocytes. These microsporocytes divide by meiosis to produce haploid microspores. Meanwhile, a similar process occurs within the flower's female parts, which consist of one or more carpels. In this example, the single carpel consists of a stigma, style, ovary, and ovule. A single diploid megasporocyte exists in the ovule and divides by meiosis to produce four haploid megaspores, only one of which survives. By producing two different types of spores, the microspores and megaspores, Angiosperms and all other seed plants are considered heterosporous. Each microspore undergoes a mitotic division and differentiation to produce a pollen grain. A pollen grain is the haploid male gametophyte called a microgametophyte. The surviving megaspore divides by mitosis to produce seven haploid cells. One large, centrally located cell contains two nuclei called polar nuclei. Another cell is the egg. The seven-celled structure makes up the female gametophyte called the megagametophyte. The pollen grain pollinates the female parts of the flower by landing on the stigma. Here, the pollen grain germinates and a pollen tube grows down the style until it meets the female gametophyte. Two sperm from the pollen grain travel through the pollen tube and enter the female gametophyte. One fertilizes the egg forming a diploid zygote. The other fertilizes two polar nuclei, forming a triploid cell. The fertilization of both the egg cell and the central cell is called double fertilization, a hallmark of the life cycle of angiosperms. The zygote, which begins the next sporophyte generation, develops into the embryo, while the triploid cell develops into the nutritive endosperm of the seed. The seed germinates, and when the sporophyte matures, the life cycle begins again.